Americans have expressed concerns over privacy. This comes as many Americans have expressed distrust in the FBI following the search of Mar-a-Lago and the delayed investigation into Hunter Biden's laptop. Here to give his insight is author of The Mysteries of Watergate and former U.S. prosecutor John D. O'Connor. John, thank you for joining me. Good to be with you. Now, this law was put in place during the Obama administration in 2008. That was during the middle of the uh, Middle East terrorism threats, and it's been renewed by Congress twice. But now Congress has decided not to renew it. What could the effects be on regular American citizens? Well, first of all, I do think it will get renewed, but I hope they put in place some safeguards so that someone is uh, looking at them in confidence and seeing what they're really doing. Uh, here's what here's what this law does. It's not the FISA law, as many people are familiar with, but this allows uh, wiretapping and surveilling any American citizen who is talking to a foreigner. Uh, I know being in the Bay Area here in San Francisco, there are many people that speak, for example, to China uh, and also to the former Soviet republics. Uh, I think we ought to have the power if we have articulable suspicion that they are engaged in terrorist activities to surveil them because um, there, there are some serious concerns. That said, the real problem here is the terrible abuses of our investigative agencies. People do not trust the CIA and more importantly, they do not trust this FBI. It's a sad state. I thought the FBI, in my experience as a federal prosecutor, was the most straight arrow down the middle agency I've ever come in contact with. They're wonderful. Today, because of James Comey and following, uh, that agency has been made uh, into a partisan vehicle, and we have to really look at that. But that said, the problem is the people who are administering this law, not the law itself. Um, and I, I, it's, it's a very tough problem. I know Andy Biggs in Congress is working on this. I think he'll come up with some legislation that continues this, but gives oversight to certain members of Congress and the Senate so that they can protect unwarranted intrusions in uh, the lives of regular Americans. I mean, it is a scary thing if, if the government is going to be a big brother watching you and that you're not doing anything wrong. So there's legitimate, legitimate concern. We've seen what happened in Russiagate. We saw what happened in the Hunter Biden thing. We've seen the abuses of January 6th uh, and uh, what's happened to some of the people that were really innocent. Now, I, look, I think there's some thugs there that ought to get thrown away and where the sun don't shine. But most of the people in January 6th that have been held in solitary confinement, I think, were uh, again, the victims of government overreach. So there's a lot of reasons for the public to distrust uh, our agencies, our investigative and prosecuting agencies, but we, we need this law. Unfortunately, I have to say what I really think and that we have to keep this law. Okay, well, we are approaching the 2024 presidential election. So how imperative is it for the candidates now, just the candidates to have this protection from the FBI, or should the DOJ be able to essentially spy on candidates to see where their dealings lie? Oh, that's absolutely 100% wrong. I think the law that we should pass would allow for us, should allow for us to prosecute uh, investigative agencies that do trample on people's civil rights. Uh, there used to be a more robust uh, uh, set of judicial uh, decisions that allowed that. Uh, by statute, we are protecting agents more than I think they should be protected. If there is an intentional abuse of civil rights, such as um, monitoring or surveilling a political candidate, after all, that's what Watergate was supposedly about. Um, I think that there should be some actions taken. These people should not be immune. Right now, they've been granted a form of immunity when Trump, for example, recently sued them in regard to Russiagate, they got out on the basis that I'm talking about, at least the federal government agents did. 
And uh, that reverses the statute, reverses some judge-made law that was very good and very sound. So I think we can protect these people, but I think Congress has got to really look at this. And rather than getting rid of 702, we ought to have a statute that does exactly what you're suggesting, protects against surveilling uh, for political purposes. Now, John, you you wrote a book, you wrote two books on Watergate, and you have a Watergate podcast, and you just mentioned Watergate. So tell us, do you see any similarities um, you know, to the Nixon administration, what the cut country witnessed during Watergate? Well, what's interesting is, is that Richard Nixon never knew what had happened in Watergate. Everyone assumes that he was intentionally covering up something that he had orchestrated. And in my books, I talk about how he didn't orchestrate anything at all, but was really the victim of a press that really did know what had happened and was covering up for the real culprits in Watergate. Now, Nixon technically obstructed justice on a couple of occasions, so I don't doubt that. Should he have been uh, pushed out the door with threatened impeachment? No, he should not have been. But so what we're seeing is a replay of that, interestingly enough. I think the combination of the press and the investigative agencies can make a Watergate out of anything. We can make a Watergate out of, you name it, uh, Trump keeping a few documents at Mar-a-Lago. We can make that into a big deal. The press can. And at the same time, the press can protect outrageous national security corruption of Hunter Biden and perhaps, perhaps, of his father, certainly of Hunter's uncle, and yet the and the press can protect people. The, the press has the power to hype and suppress, and so that's why it's ever more incumbent upon us to straighten up our investigative agencies. So your point is very, very well taken. Okay, well, John D. O'Connor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your amazing insight today. Thank you. Great being with you.